Good evening, I'm Dania and this is Kini News. Police recorded the statements of the three Malaysia Kini journalists today. During the questioning, the investigating officer posed a direct question seeking the identity of the source quoted in an article. Police summoned three Malaysia Kini journalists to have their statements recorded over a news report today. This was over an article claiming that the Bukit Amman Federal Police Headquarters is planning a major reshuffle of its top leadership. The journalists spent over an hour giving their statement at the Dangwangi District Police Headquarters. The trio's lawyer, Raj Suryan Pillay, told reporters later that the investigating officer posed a direct question seeking the identity of the source quoted in the article. I pun sangat profesional melakukan tugas. Telah uh, tanya lebih kurang dalam 27 soalan. Dan antara satunya adalah, antara beberapa soalan adalah cuba untuk tanya uh, siapakah ataupun apakah sumber uh, yang di mana information diperolehi untuk menulis artikel tersebutlah. Tapi kebanyakan soalannya jawab di mahkamah dan uh, ethics of journalism states that you cannot reveal your sources. I think everyone can understand this and everyone can respect it including the police. He added that investigations are still ongoing and they don't know if they could be called again to assist in the investigation. On Tuesday, Malaysia Kini published an article on Bukit Aman allegedly planning a major reshuffle involving its top officers including Deputy Inspector General Ayub Khan Maidin Pichai. Following this, Razaruddin issued a statement where he described the speculations as untrue as the Federal Police Headquarters had not issued an official statement on the matter. Kuala Lumpur Police Chief Ruzdi Mohamad Issa later said that police are investigating the article after a Bukit Aman officer lodged a police report on the matter. Still on the topic, Zaid Ibrahim told the police that they should have just denied the report instead of opening a criminal investigation against the journalist for doing their jobs. Former Minister Zaid Ibrahim slammed the police for alleged harassment of three Malaysia Kini journalists. This was concerning an article claiming that the Bukit Aman Federal Police Headquarters is planning a major reshuffle of its top leadership. In a post on X this morning, Zaid said a mere denial of the report would do rather than a criminal investigation against the journalists for doing their jobs. He said journalists know their responsibility to report based on factual events. Zaid added that when the sources are unconfirmed, they would exercise caution and would check and countercheck to ensure the credibility of the source. He also pointed out that great stories revealing instances of crimes committed by governments worldwide had been broken by journalists from unconfirmed sources. Yesterday, Inspector General of Police Razaruddin Hussein confirmed that three Malaysia Kini journalists will be summoned to the Dangwangi District Police Headquarters today to have their statements recorded. On Tuesday, Malaysia Kini published an article on Bukit Aman allegedly planning a major reshuffle involving its top officers, including Deputy Inspector General Ayub Khan Maidin Piche. Following this, Razaruddin issued a statement describing the speculations as untrue as the Federal Police Headquarters had not issued an official statement on the matter. Before we move on, if you like access to news like this and more, consider donating to Kini TV by scanning the QR code on the screen. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has responded to the report that Tesla has cancelled its plans to build EV manufacturing plants in Southeast Asia and instead focused on developing charging stations. This is what he said. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim claimed that Tesla suffered losses and struggled to keep up with the intense competition from Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers. When quizzed on the matter today, Anwar told the media that Tesla shared this information with the Investment Trade and Industry Ministry led by Tengku Zafrul Abdul Aziz. Zafrul akan dapat maklumat terkini kerana mereka mengalami kerugian tidak dapat bersaing dengan EV negara China. Jadi operasi dari Thailand itu besar. Kita baru nak mula. Jadi itu kita dah dapat keterangan langsung bukan daripada liputan. Itu Tesla. Earlier today, Zafrul said that the US EV manufacturer had never committed to opening a factory in the country. Zafrul said while the ministry engaged with Tesla, the idea of setting up a factory here was never discussed. Earlier, Tanku Zafrul reportedly said that Tesla had never committed to opening a factory in Malaysia. Tesla has never committed to opening a factory in Malaysia. 
This is according to Minister of Investment, Trade and Industry, Tanku Zafrul Abdul Aziz. In a post on Facebook, Zafrul explained that the Investment, Trade and Industry Ministry had engaged in discussions with Tesla founder Elon Musk in efforts to attract investment, but these discussions did not involve setting up a factory. He added that the foreign news report on the issue is not an official statement from Tesla, but rather quotes anonymous or unnamed sources. He was referring to the Thai online news portal The Nation, which cited unnamed sources within the government regarding Tesla's cancellations of plans to develop factories in Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia. The report also stated that Tesla's current discussions are only focused on efforts related to charging stations and has suspended plans to develop factories not just in Thailand but globally. In March last year, Tesla announced plans to open a headquarters in Malaysia, introduce a Tesla Experience Center and Service Center, and establish a super-fast charging network in the country. Several DAP leaders have called for Perikatan National to state their stand on the Kafir Harbi remark made by an individual during a PN event. They also called on the speaker to apologize. Several Malay DAP lawmakers have demanded an apology from Perikatan National leaders. This comes after a viral video showed a man who was seemingly chairing a PN Charama session for the Negeri by-election campaign, calling DAP a Kafir Harbi party. Kafir Harbi is a label used against non-Muslims who oppose Islam. In a joint statement today, DAP Central Executive Council members Sheikh Umar Bakharib Ali, Sharit Zan Johan and Yang Shifura Othman urged the speaker to apologize to all Muslim DAP members. They also called on PN and PAS to state their stand on the remark made by the individual. The DAP leaders said if PN and PAS are also opposed to it, they should condemn the remark as well. They reminded the opposition that the party is a legally registered entity with members from various races and religions. They also urged PN members to be mature when campaigning instead of playing up politics of hate. In the nearly two-minute clip of the speech, the speaker started by acknowledging the presence of Rambia Assembly person Muhammad Jailani Kamis. He then veered towards the subject of Kafir Harbi, saying that this was DAP and it has made plans to control Malaysia and is being helped by several AMNO leaders. Zaid Hamidi has told those who raised the claim of government machinery being used in the Negeri polls to lodge a report through the proper channels. BN is willing to investigate claims that government machinery was used in the Negeri by election campaigning as long as such allegations are backed with proof. This is according to BN chairperson Ahmad Zaid Hamidi. He added that if they have evidence, then the critics should lodge complaints through the proper channels under the Elections Act. Zaid said they shouldn't simply accuse BN of using government machinery. He told reporters that he also believes that the Kelantan state government is doing it too. Yesterday, Kelantan Menteri Besar Nasruddin Daud slammed BN for allegedly using government-owned premises for its election operation in Negeri. Electoral Reform Group Bursi had also condemned BN over the matter. The issue was brought up by Perkata National Operation Director for the Negeri by-election Anwar Musa on Wednesday. Next, we have a branded content from Lala Move. Lala Move, a top provider of innovative on-demand delivery services, proudly announces the grand opening of its first driver centre in Kuching, Sarawak. The prestigious event was graced by the distinguished presence of Dato Sri Lee Kim Shin, Minister of Transport, Sarawak. And I feel that uh, Lala Move can provide good logistic service here in Sarawak and provide new opportunities also. I said, um, since it started in May, how many drivers or uh, have uh, registered in Lala Book, I become a Lala Book driver. I couldn't believe it, we did two months, 3,000 already registered. <laughs> this exciting expansion is a major milestone in Lala Move's mission to boost local economic growth and provide new income opportunities for Sarawakians. Lala Move has invested a comprehensive driver training so that we ensure they know um, the areas that they are going in when they select the job itself, they will assess whether their vehicle type is suitable for the uh, to perform the job. Uh, additionally, uh, we are also implementing uh, advanced technology such as route optimization. So, as a user, say if I have five 
uh, drop off points. I can just input these five drop off points and um, allow it to optimize based on the route. With that, we are able to uh, lower to have the most efficient in terms of course when it comes to completing the orders. We are, we, we are working closely with local businesses to see how we can also support them when it comes to expanding their business, be it uh, across Malaysia, across Peninsula or across Malaysia. That is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'm Dania. Thanks for watching.